Welcome to the video tutorial on setting file permissions on Linux. Security is a big concern for Linux which is a clone of Unix, the multi-user operating system. As Linux is used in mainframes and servers, it is vital to keep it safe from a malign user who can corrupt, change or remove crucial data. This is why, for effective security, Linux divides authorization into two levels ownership and permission. The concept of permissions and ownership is crucial in Linux. Here we will discuss both of them. Let us start with ownership in Linux files. Every file and directory in your Unix or Linux system is assigned three types of owner. The first one among them is user. A user is the owner of the file. By default, the person who created a file becomes its owner. Hence, a user is also sometimes called an owner. The next one is a group. A user group can contain multiple users. All users belonging to a group will have the same access permissions to the file. So you can add many users to a group and assign group permission to a file so that only the group members can read or modify them. Third is other who is any other user who has access to a file. This person has neither created the file nor does he belong to a user group which owns the file. Practically it means everybody else. Hence when you set the permission for others it is also referred as set permissions for world. Now the big question arises how does Linux distinguishes between these three user types so that a user A cannot affect a file which contains some other user B's vital information or data. It is like you do not want your colleague who works on your Linux computer to view your personal images. This is where permissions set in and they define user behavior. Let us understand the permission system on Linux. Every file and directory in your Unix or Linux system has three permissions read, write and execute defined for all the three users that we discussed earlier. This permission gives you the authority to open and read a file. Read permission on a directory gives you the ability to list its content. The write permission gives you the authority to modify the contents of a file. The write permission on a directory gives you the authority to add, remove and rename files stored in the directory. In Windows, an executable program usually has an extension exe which you can easily run. In Unix or Linux, you cannot run a program unless the execute permission is set. For example, in the sample file here, the user does not have the permission to execute it. Hence, we would get an error message if we try to open it. Therefore, if the execute permission is not set, you will not be able to run the file. Let us learn more about Linux security by examples. Running the lsl command on terminal gives us the following result. By picking the details for the first file, we get to know that the file types and access permissions are displayed by this weird looking code. Let us learn what it is about. Let's first learn about the characters. R stands for read permission. W is for write permission. X is execute permission and the hyphen states no permission. Here the first hyphen implies that we have selected a file. Else if it were a directory D would have been shown. The next part of the code is RW hyphen and it tells us the permissions for the owner. This suggests that the owner can read the file, write or edit the file, but he cannot execute the file since the execute bit is set to hyphen which is no permission. The next part is RW hyphen. It is for the user group which is Guru99 and the group members can read the file and write or edit the file. By design 
Many Linux distributions like Fedora, CentOS, Ubuntu, etc. will add users to a group of the same group name as the user name. Thus, a user Tom is added to a group named Tom. The third part is for the world which means any user. It says R hyphen hyphen. This means that the user can only read the file. Moving on, let's say you do not want your colleague to see your personal images. You can easily do so by changing file permissions. We can use the chmod command which stands for change mode. Using the command we can set permissions is that read, write and execute on a file or directory for the owner, group and the world. There are two ways to use the command. The first one is the absolute mode and the second one is the symbolic mode. Starting with the first one, in this mode file permissions are not represented as characters but a three digit octal number. The table shows numbers for all the permission types. For example, the number 0 states no permission and the symbol for it is three hyphens successively. The number 1 would be for execute and the symbol for the same is hyphen hyphen x. Let us understand this by an example. Here we have a file with the name test. We will change the permissions for this file using the absolute mode of chmod command. Here we use the 764 absolute code and now the permissions for test file would change. Let's examine the changes to the permissions. 764 absolute code says the following. Read, write and execute for the user or the owner read and write for the user group and read only for other users. So this is how we can change the permissions using the absolute mode of the chmod command. Moving on to the next way. In the absolute mode you change permissions for all three owners but under symbolic mode you can modify permissions of a specific owner as well. It makes use of mathematical symbols to modify the file permissions. So the plus sign would mean adding a permission to a file or directory. Minus would suggest removing the permission and equal to will set the permission and overwrite the permissions set earlier. The various owners are represented as U, G, O and A. Let us learn it with some examples. Again, we would use the same test file and change its permissions using the symbolic mode. By using O is equal to RWX, we have changed permissions for the other users. Let us check what the new permissions are. As we can see here, the other users have the read, write and execute permission for this test file. With G plus X, we have added execute permission to the group. Now if we will check the test file, it will show the read, write and execute permission for the group. By running U minus R, we will remove the read permission for the user or the owner of the file. Let us see how it looks now. As we can see, the permissions for test file do not show any read permission for the owner. This is how we can use the two methods for chmod command and change permissions. For changing the ownership of a file or directory, you can use this command. In case you want to change the user as well as group for a file or directory, you need to use this command. Let us try them on terminal. Let us change the file ownership for the file commands. Right now it shows that the owner of the file is guru99. By running the chaoan command with sudo we would be able to change the owner of this file to root. As you can see the new owner for the file commands is root. Now let us try changing the user group and group ownership of the same file. Right now the owner of the file is root and the user group of the file is also root. We would change it to guru99. 
For this, we would need to run the command sudo shaon the owner name, then the group name, and then the name of the file. Let us see the changes in the user and group ownership. As you can see here, the commands file is now owned by Guru99 and it also belongs to the same user group. In case you want to change only the group owner of a file, you would need to run the following command. Here we would again change the group owner of the file commands to root. The chgrp command stands for change group. Now let us go through some important tips on user groups. The file etc group contains all the groups defined in the system. In order to reach this file you need to go to the file system, click on etc directory and then search for the group file. Upon opening this file you would be able to see all the groups present on your Linux system. You can use the command groups to find all the groups you are a member of. So it shows here that the Guru99 user is a member of the following groups. You can use the command new grp to work as a member of a new group other than your default group. Let's see how it works. Let us now change the user group for the user Guru99 to CD-ROM. Let's create a new file as test. Upon checking the detailed information for this file, we will find that the user group for the test file is CD-ROM instead of the default Guru99. The next step says that you cannot have two groups owning the same file. So one group can be a subgroup of another which can own a file. Let's now quickly summarize what we have learned. Linux being a multi-user system uses permissions and ownerships for security. There are three user types on a Linux system, user, group and other. Linux divides the file permissions into read, write and execute denoted by R, W and X. The permissions on a file can be changed by chmod command which can be further divided into absolute and symbolic mode. The chown command can change the ownership of a file or a directory. Use the following commands for changing the user or the user and the user group at the same time. The chgrp command can change the group ownership. The command is chgrp group and the file name. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next tutorial.